Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm John Tear, President and CEO of the Boulder Chamber, and I welcome you to our monthly conversation with community leaders and business officials and uh, community officials and business leaders, maybe, um, who are addressing issues that are of importance to our businesses, to our economy, and to our community. Today, we are completely honored to have the re-elected representative to RTD from Boulder, Lynn Geisinger, who now has been appointed as by her peers as board chair. So really exciting leadership role for Lynn. And so we're gonna have a conversation about transit in our community and broadly across the region and some of the vision looking forward for transit as a key component of mobility for our workforce and for our residents. And so welcome to the Chamber Chat, Lynn. Thank you, John. It's nice to be back. Thanks for having me back. And um, thanks for all that you do and the Chamber does and Boulder Transportation Connections. Uh, you've all been very supportive of so many of the RTD initiatives, Spare the Air, the Zero Fare Month, and, yep. and so many other things. So um, it's nice to be here to chat. Yeah, sure Although I'm is. still waiting for the invitation to beers with John. <laughs> there's there's one coming up, so I expect to see you there. Okay. And I'll have the beer ready. But I, I will say that um, yes, it has been a great partnership with you, and I just appreciate your being open and, and uh, uh, supporting our efforts to help our workforce get uh, to and from work into their homes. So thank you so much for all the the partnership. Um, I'm just going to hit it right off with this new role that you have as board chair. Um, that's exciting, it's a leadership position. And so what is your um, sort of interest or vision for your work as board chair and managing your other colleagues? Great. Uh, for starters, I've been board chair for exactly just about three weeks. <laughs> and uh, so I'm still getting my feet on the ground. It's mm -hmm. a lot more work than I expected. Sure. Um, but uh, I'm learning a lot and talking to a lot of the board members. One of the first things I want to do, and I'll be sending this out today, in order to define our goals, is to get the goals of the board members. Ask them to send in what they're most concerned about, what they would like to work on. We're scheduling a, a um, retreat in the near future, and that will give us a chance to really move forward. But it, for me personally, you know, and I think for most people in the agency, the big issues, funding long-term, yeah. workforce, uh, safety, those sorts of things, and I know we'll be we'll be talking about some of those. But um, especially for funding, it's what I want is to take initial steps and to help the board members take initial steps, or I should say, continuing steps, mm -hmm. to really um, engage with all of their local governments, all of gotcha. our local governments, yeah. our legislators, so that um, they. It's, too many people feel like, oh, we don't hear from RTD. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's all RTD's fault, yeah. but um, clearly, you know, it, we will do better in terms of our partnerships and our long term future uh, the, the more we develop those relationships. I guess it's great. So, encouraging them to outreach to their local communities, get feedback, and to start thinking about solutions for, as you mentioned, for funding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, the speaking of funding and, and thinking just like diving right into one of the bigger um, transit issues always in our community is the Northwest Rail Line and knowing that the funding has been a challenge for that investment. Um, I understand that RTD is undertaking a new study um, right. and I'm just wondering you know what is that study and how can folks in our community get involved in that? Great it's a good time to ask me that well we missed the first meeting, but there, there is another one and an online meeting coming up. Sure. We have a peak period Northwest Rail study that's underway. We have the consultants and the RTD team. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in the middle of the public, one step of the public engagement. We have a um, strategic advisory committee that is a mostly staff, but from, from the cities and the county and, and, and counties, um, uh, all through the Northwest mm -hmm. Corridor have yeah. representation on that. I think you do too. I think yeah. Jonathan is, Singer is on that committee. But this, last night they had an open house uh, here in Boulder and uh, it was a, a setup where they had posters for a lot of different pieces 
of the study, um, and it had a good turnout. I, I could only go for a bit because there was a board meeting, but there was a, there was a good turnout. I heard there were a lot of good questions. Tomorrow night there is one in Westminster. Uh, I wrote down the uh, the URL for the online meeting where you can learn it all and give feedback. But basically, the easiest thing to do is go to go to RTD, Google RTD Denver Northwest Rail Study. Mm. And um, your feedback would be great. Go in, take a look, and uh, and let us know what you think. Because they're starting to look at alignments. They'll be pulling together. One of the goals is a common set of facts. Yeah. You know, we've looked at years ago um, what the ridership, the costs, and all of that for the full build out. The peak period proposal is three trains in the morning from Longmont down through Boulder and Louisville and, and Westminster um, to Denver and three trains in the evening coming back okay. late afternoon. Gotcha. Um, the reason to do that now is that um, front range passenger rail is, is on deck, yeah. um, at least being examined and, and with the hope of going to the uh, ballot for funding, you know, they'll go to the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. The governor is, is very supportive of that. So if that can get funded and uh, if they choose the Northwest Corridor, which it's too soon to say they will, but there are mm -hmm. indications that that is a leading um, we would want option. That, no we question. would want that, yeah. yeah. They would have different service. Theirs is intercity, ours is, is more commuter, but um, that certainly would make a difference in terms of capital costs. I got you. So looking at a short term, um, just a, a peak service, I guess it's called, um, uh, opportunity, but at the same time dovetailing that with a broader investment along the entire corridor for uh, the front range. Yeah, that's that's exciting. Yeah. So make sure to weigh in, go to that website, and uh, give your perspective on the Northwest Rail That'd uh, be great. study. Yep. Yeah, please. Um, well, so we rail's not happening tomorrow, right. um, and mm -hmm. uh, we still need to have regional transit service. And so I'm just wondering, what are you seeing coming forward in terms of additional regional uh, transit investment for, for our region, for our community. Great. Uh, you know, the, the big ones that I lobby for, and there are a number of uh, regional areas that are in, in the Northwest mm -hmm. area, mobility uh, study, the NAMS from 2013, I think, 2014. But, um, you know, right now, what I'm hearing from the county and the cities here are the FF2, the Flatiron Flyer Express, the FF4, which is the flatter and flyer that goes from Boulder Junction to Civic Center, sure. the opposite end of the, of the mall from Union Station. The LX from Longmont down to Denver. The GS from Boulder to, to Golden. You wow, know, some great. of the ones that I'm, I'm really lobbying for. You know, I hear uh, some possibility of, of uh, movement on those in That's the right. near future. Yeah. And the biggest problem on those <clears throat> is workforce yeah. and we've been struggling agency-wide on workforce but <clears throat> with operators you know that's why you see buses canceled mm -hmm. and things like that i know you had that experience oh <laughs> yeah. tell you a story yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just borrow your sheet because i wrote some numbers down that sure. i don't recall but in, tw in 2021 we signed a new no at the beginning of 2022 early 2022 we signed a new collective bargaining agreement was one that the union and management were all very, very happy with. Yep. You know, it, it really gave some nice raises and and um, settled some issues with the pension plan, put in place uh, new retirement plans, those sorts of things. So in 2021, agency wide, we hired 302 people mm -hmm. and we had 1,165 who separated. Whoa. Yeah, that was not good. 2022, we hired 708 and only 401 left so uh, i think we are managing um the retention much better yeah, yeah. that's so, great uh, hopefully that will start opening up we have the five-year system optimization plan that all of those buses that i just mentioned are in and the issue now is getting the workforce mm -hmm. both both frontline employees and and needed planners and everything else to get those lines go and get those buses running okay well I, you know it's funny you talk about it because it, this regional and service investment in fact all rtds uh, transit services are so critical for our workforce 
and making sure that we can attract and retain them in Boulder. Um, and it's ironic that one of the challenges is that RTD is, is having uh, difficulty hiring the, the ridership to, to, uh, to propel the services for it. So good to see that there's progress in that area. I congratulate you on that. Um, well, let me um, ask you just about uh, uh, a center for regional transit, and that is an area that has developed significantly in Boulder. They, RTD also made a major investment in a station in the area, and that's Boulder Junction. Yep. Um, and it seems that we've had um, service was initially there, and then it was cut back, and now it's really nothing. And I'm just wondering, uh, what's the future for transit service to that critical uh, mixed-use development area? I am totally on that one too. I was uh, in the station the other day doing a short video for the city, the Boulder Junction Station, and um, uh, it's such a beautiful station. It's yeah. so clean, it's brand new. The mm -hmm. Roadhouse Restaurant or Depot is right above it, and, and as you said, there's a, a large amount of residentials and commercial, mm -hmm. and what are they about to build another thousand residential units, yeah. I think. Um, in the Transit Village area plan too. Um, so it's a really important piece. You know, the, the governor's push right now is for more housing and a lot of transit oriented development along the transit lines. And I think the local governments are pushing for that too. So um, if you're singing my song, I love it. I'm trying to get that service back. Apparently it takes more drivers than some of the other buses, but um, okay. Have a great service planner up here, Natalie, and um, uh, so I think I'm hopeful. I don't don't see it happening right away, but hopefully in, in the near future. All right. Well, make sure to weigh in on that, just in supporting Lynn in that effort, because it is really important to get that service. It's a it's a great jobs area as well as residential. Uh, mix of development and so we want to make sure to support it with transit. So let me hit you with one other thing. So we, we've talked then about rail and other regional transit, but then we want to also think about the local service that connects to the regional routes and gets folks from the regional directly to their um, place of work. And we've seen some cutbacks there. Um, and I understand that RT is thinking about a more creative way to invest and bring in partnership relationships with local communities. I'm wondering what that looks like, and I'll just throw in one other thing that you know that we've been very interested in uh, doing a pilot program right. um, in the gun barrel area where we would have a um, on-demand uh, shuttle service that would connect to the regional transit to uh, places of work. And so, wondering where we are in that partnership work. The, the partnership plan has been approved, it, mm -hmm. and it came out of originally out of the accountability committee that mm -hmm. the governor appointed. And um, a, another uh, initiative that came out of that was the creation of five sub-regional councils that are staffed by um, uh, staff, maybe some elected too. Although I think it's mm -hmm. it's mostly staff. So, for instance, Boulder County is its own sub-regional council, and they have. Um, regular meetings. The idea is that the local staff and government um, officials are closer to what's important on the local yeah. level. Yeah. And um, so RTD is, the, they set those up to listen, they set up a partnership program to uh, encourage partnerships mm -hmm. and to make them you know, equitable across the district. Yeah. Um, I think the partnership program is great. You know, it, some people say, well, you're ask, asking us to put more money into it. Mm -hmm. um, but RTD can't do everything with the money mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. And so, we're, as I said, funding is a piece of it. This, this plan is just one piece of that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the important thing is that, in my opinion, that everybody be putting in money equally sure. if they want those those partnerships. Some, and some of the local, the more local service. Yeah, I know that um, in Boulder, definitely we have been willing to invest in local service. Um, and even the private sector, um, we found, has been willing to partner uh, yep. to try to bring that service uh, together for the workforce. So this partnership mechanism, I think, is uh, really going to benefit us. And again, we're hoping that this uh, gun barrel pilot program, uh, pilot shuttle, will have the opportunity to take advantage of it. My sense is that the gun barrel pilot program is 
is at the top of the list or near the top That's of awesome. the list. Is that your sense as well? Well, I, I look to experts. You're on, hoping. On that, but I, we're, we're hopeful, and, and we've, of course, been working in partnership with you and, and, and others, uh, the city and the county, to try right. to make it a reality. So um, stay tuned. Stay Gun tuned. Gunfarrel Shuttle coming soon, and hopefully a model for other uh, business districts. Um, You're, you've, I think you and your team have been doing a great job putting that plan together and bringing uh, Deborah Johnson, our CEO, and some of her team up here to see what you're talking about. Yeah. And I think that always makes a great impression. Again, advice to, the, to others out there who are, who are looking to, to partner. Um, and, you know, it, it's not, it, it hasn't moved quickly, but mm -hmm. I think it's moving along, and I'm yeah. hopeful that we'll be able to get that going in the not too distant future. Me too. Well, yeah. thank you for your partnership on that. Sure. Um, so another issue that um, has confronted RTD, and it's uh, not unique just to RTD, but um, it, the concerns about public safety, and in particular at some of the bus stops in the, in the area, um, some of the, the car park and ride areas. Uh, wondering what is RTD doing in that area to give folks more confidence in public safety? Yeah, they're kind of a couple of different um, pieces to that, you know, district-wide, and I think a lot on the light rail, um, we've had the problem with people uh, doing drugs and uh, with other people. And part of that issue is the light rail, the ridership got down so low, you know, yeah. people are feeling like the, the cars are not busy. Yeah. Um, but apparently, you know, it's happening more than, than just occasionally, if we would like that. But we have a new police chief who's stepping up enforcement Union Station became, uh, you know, sort of a um, a place where people very logically came to last winter when um, the city of Denver closed down Civic Center Park to camping because um, it has benches and it's warm and mm -hmm. all of those things and and uh, you know those are big concerns. RTD was the first transit agency in the country to hire. Uh, mental health workers to help oh. people find where we've got four or five now to help people find services and yep. um, and shelter and all of those things up here um, a problem that has plagued the whole area and the whole country mm -hmm. is the huge increase in catalytic converter thefts yeah. and uh, you know that was an issue at Table Mesa Park and Ride there's been a lot done the um, our new police chief is has been working with Boulder PD mm -hmm. and they put in uh, cameras and uh, signage and they're they're moving people who are long-term parkers like leaving uh, to the airport for mm -hmm. um, you know a week or two or whatever to a certain area I think it's at the top of the garage okay. so they can really focus you know some of their efforts on those and mm -hmm. I think uh, I haven't gotten a real a real recent update on that but I think they're making good good progress yeah bringing those numbers down. Starting to reduce it. And, and again, these are uh, issues that plague the entire metro area. It's huge. Um, I'd say nationally, but um, obviously RTD is one of the targets. And so appreciate the creative uh, efforts and um, just focusing on that. Because obviously if people don't feel safe coming on transit, then they, they won't ride. They won't ride. So right. that's really important effort. I think just <clears throat> my experience going through Union Station and you know riding the buses, um, that uh, it's cleaned up a lot and uh, I haven't heard the kind of problems on the flat iron flyer for instance yeah. of drug use and things like that and I think that those are um, uh, safe and, and uh, generally up here uh, they did you know like Boulder library was closed for meth in the bathrooms mm -hmm. and unfortunately down, downtown Boulder station has also been closed with the same problems of traces of meth in the bathroom but hopefully we'll get that cleaned up put in cameras or whatever mm -hmm. we need to do to keep that from happening, get it reopened. Good, well great, I and mean, that's an important focus. Um, so maybe switching to something just, to, you know, I, I'm, I'd say really remarkably positive. Uh -huh. And that was the Spare the Air campaign. Um, yes. Yeah, and just this experimentation with free ridership. Um, can you tell us what you learned from that and what were some of the results? Sure, I think Judging from all the people I've talked to, most people watching this will know what we're talking about, but just yeah. just in case the, uh, uh, the governor uh, and the, clean, and the um, energy office, Will Tour, um, 
pr proposed funding the funding RTD and other transit agencies around the state to um, allow for free fares during the highest ozone season. And last year we were able to provide free fares on all our services for the month of August. And it was a huge success. We had a 22% jump in ridership from July to August. Wow. Normally, you know, I think last year it was a 7%, so there was mm -hmm. a piece, you know, that, that you, but still, it's a big change. And um, the ridership didn't stay at that level, but it stayed up mm -hmm. um, in September, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the, the following months. There's uh, that statute, that bill, it provided for grants out of the Colorado Energy Office for two years. Mm -hmm. And there's a new bill in the legislature that the board just last night voted to support. Wow. And um, it would let us, we didn't use all the $11 million that was that was funded in the first grant. It would let us roll over the remaining money and um, not require us to do the 20% match. So the hope is that will give us more options to expand the program. Love it. Yeah, me yeah. too. I love it. Yeah. People love it. I heard about yeah. it from so many people and, and it was just a, a great success to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just know from working with RTD that that friction um, of paying for service versus just knowing that you can just get right on the bus when, it, when you see it going by or yep. um, think about it in a daily commute. Um, to not have to think about the payment elements is such a value. Yep. So I uh, appreciate that experimentation and, and hopefully continues forward and expand it. Um, well, the final question is a big question. All right. Um, and we're thinking. We'll see. I'll try oh, to give you a big answer. I, exactly. <laughs> I expect you to answer for all the <laughs> yeah. um, but I just, you know, going forward, I mean, the RTD has had challenges. We talked about some of those issues, safety, uh, funding, those kinds of things. Uh, so if you're looking down the road, what is that vision that you have for regional transit and for RTD's role um, in supporting it? My vision for regional transit is that RTD I guess I've got, got two pieces of that. With our funding constraints, RTD, um, I hope we'll be focusing on that regional backbone yeah. and we'll be able to develop the partnerships that let us also expand service so to the level that people want mm -hmm. in, uh, in the local areas, because we can't do it alone. But, yeah. um, you know, working with the state, uh, this is, this spare the air is, um, the most money that the state has ever given RTD mm -hmm. and um, I know that Senator Winter who's been a, a real backer of that would love to see it continue mm -hmm. and expand and um, certainly we would as well um, and at the same time you know the sales and use tax doesn't expand the way we need to every ride on the RTD as you know having been the director there as well is seat, yeah. heavily subsidized yeah. and some more than others but um, you know finding a funding mechanism that uh, grows with our, our service yeah. is a big challenge and mm -hmm. one we're working on we also potentially have Tabor problems where once we pay off the bonds in the next couple of years for the base those mm -hmm. old um, early bonds we may have to um, have be subject to Tabor refunds uh, if those come up. So ooh, we've got right. some issues, yeah. Got some uh, issues. We've got some issues. That will surprise everyone, won't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad you're we there to deal with them. Yeah. Well, thanks. And yeah. we have a good team. I think we have a, a, a really good board at this point. A lot of people who've been in local government positions and, you know, a mayor and, and two mayors and, and some city council people and people that have mm -hmm. done taken various roles. And we've also got uh, a great GM CEO and Deborah Johnson and, yep. she, and her team. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm feeling optimistic. I love it. I yeah. love it and I am too. Good. Um, and I'm optimistic because I feel like we have great collaboration from the local officials, from our RTD board directors, and I'm seeing uh, staff stepping to come up with us in partnership yep. to just get a handle on what, what the, the issues are and then setting a path forward. And I love your vision for the regional focus for RTD with the a little bit more flexibility at the local level for those partnerships. So um, we look forward to partnering with you. Um, and I'll just say that 
Um, again, I set it up front. We're very fortunate to have you as our representative. You oh, are you. somebody who's very open and just uh, accessible to us as an organization um, and just great vision for how to handle um, both the politics of the region but also um, just the technical issues that are so complex. So, Well, thanks. And, and I feel very lucky to be representing your team and the city and the county, the cities, uh, the several that because um, up here people like transit they yeah. they want to invest in it they mm -hmm. appreciate it and want to be using it so um, it's easy to to advocate for bringing more uh, well, let's get more let's get more all right well <laughs> thank you director lynn geisinger for being with us here on chamber chat and thanks to all of you for watching us and we'll see you next time on chamber chat chamber chat thanks <laughs> all right Feel good? Yeah, that felt good. What it was think? awesome. Good. Anything that you felt like you wanted to mix? I felt everything was just on point. On point. Yeah. Good. Yeah, no, cool. thanks. That was fun. Yay. Yeah. All right, right. I'm going to do one more thing. Okay. i got to do my chamber chat, and you're going to do it with me. Oh, I'll do it with you. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. We're looking forward to our next chamber chat, and we're going to have on the show our re-elected RTD Board District Representative, Lynn Geisiger, who has now been appointed as chair of the RTD Board of Directors, and we're gonna talk about investing in regional transit, the Northwest Rail Line, dealing with public safety issues, and the vision for transit in our region. So, we'll see you next time on Chamber, Chamber Chat. Chat.